Hi my loves, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to yet another video with me. If you are new here, my name is Danelle Moth and to my retaining subscribers, thank you so much for the continuous love and support and welcome to yet another video with me. So today we are doing another cook with me video. So what are we going to be making today? Uh, we're going to be making some dumplings, idombolo. We're going to be making some beef stew. We're going to be making some beetroot as well as spinach, butternut and chakalaka. So I know I asked on my community post if I should make dumpling and oxtail. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the oxtail so I substituted with the beef. So that will also work. And then um, I've already cooked my beetroot in here for about an hour um, on the stove uh, with a stove setting of five. So I've cooked that for an hour and it's ready just in water. I just put it inside the water and you leave it for an hour. So now um, we're gonna get into making the dumpling so we can wait for it to like rise while we're busy with the other stuff like i'm gonna start chopping my other ingredients my peppers onions spinach everything else i'm gonna need in the process so let's get right into that and before i get into that don't forget to like comment and subscribe i love hearing back from you guys so keep dropping those comments and tell me if you're enjoying the cooking videos and yeah i've been seeing some of you commenting and i love your comments and you've been asking for me to come back with another video and here we are again i hope you enjoy so let's get into it okay so we're gonna start with our dumpling first and because i'm making for one person i'm trying to make as little as possible so i'm gonna use one cup of flour for my dumpling so it don't boil up and then as you can see here i have a spoon of sugar and then half a teaspoon of yeast and a quarter of salt so if you're trying to make for more people you have to double the ingredients for example if you're going to use two cups then it means you're going to have to use two teaspoons of sugar and then you're going to have to use one teaspoon of yeast and then you're going to have to add um half teaspoon of salt so and so on so if you're trying to make three same thing so you have to just double the ingredients and triple the ingredients if you have to if you're making three cups you know you know the drill so and then here i got almost a half but not half yeah almost half of my warm water so i'm gonna use that so you don't need to pour the water all at the same time you just need to gauge how your dough is looking like as you're putting in the water so you don't get um a runny dough so i'm gonna start with this I'm gonna put in the dry first the dry ingredient first so i'm gonna start with the flour and then i'm gonna go in with the salt as my pinch of salt and then my yeast in there as well and then my teaspoon of sugar and there you go so you can get this measuring cups at most of the stores i got this at checkers so but you can get it literally almost everywhere also this i think i got this at pep it has um you know the numbering on the side so you can use it to measure your things so yeah i'm now gonna put in the water into my dough so let me mix the dry ingredients first and then now i'm just gonna add my water just also checking the consistency of my flour so it doesn't become too runny
as you can see my dough has come together and this is what i got now so i'm gonna let this um rise for a good 40 minutes or so so i'm gonna put it um today it's sort of gloomy so i won't actually put it outside but i'll just try to put it in a warm place like inside the oven but i'm not gonna like switch on the stove i'm just saying because it's probably more warmer inside a stove like because it's a closed area so i'm gonna put the dough in the stove so it can get that warmth and rise while it's in inside the stove so don't switch it on don't switch it on <laughs> so yeah we're gonna let this rise for good um 40 minutes to an hour and then we're gonna get back to it and we're gonna start cooking it once it's ready all right all right see you um when it's time to cook our dumpling all right so our dough is ready it has been rising for an hour and now as you can see it's ready so i've taken out my ceramic bowl and i'm gonna be using that to cook on the stove so inside a pot so i've glazed it with margarine inside so it does not stick um onto the bowl when i put my dough inside of the bowl so what i'm going to do now i'm going to transfer the dough into the bowl and then um my water has been boiled is ready so i'm just going to put it inside my pot on the stove and then um let it cook so let's get into that so as you can see mince is ready so this is the same dough you can also use for like if you're trying to make um what do you call maguinha right so if you're trying to make fat cook you can also use the same procedure and you will get that dough you need this dough that you need for amaguinha so if we're doing amaguinha we'll be frying this so but because we're making dumpling today so we're going to be boiling it on the top of the stove so this is what we get so as you can see it's coming out easily from the bowel and means it's good so i'm just going to transfer it into this bowel and then gonna let it cook on the stove and we'll see how it turns out beetroot all peeled off you can dice it to your choice uh, you can also like remove the hard parts of the beetroot that you don't want especially um like parts like this at the back and then you can just create the way you want to so for today i'm gonna make dices if you want you can grate it um yeah there's different ways to kill a cat so today I'm just dicing mine. I'm just gonna make squares and this is how I'm gonna make it. And then there you go, it's dices now. And then for the bottom parts, I'm just gonna need to do this. Because when you see I don't wanna cut my fingers. <laughs> so I have to go and cut the last bottom part. Um individually to ensure that my hands are safe and they are not cut but yeah basically this is what you do and then you're gonna get yourself 
some dice some squares if you want to call it and then yeah the rest of it that's it cut 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 okay so i think our dumpling is ready so i'm gonna put in my knife to check if it's ready so you know the golden rule so it must come back clean if not then i need to put it back on the stove so i'm just gonna go in here and there you go so it looks ready to me so I think we are ready to go. So I'm just gonna take it off the stove and start prepping my dumpling. by the time i'm done cooking all the other stuff so i also put the beef stock inside the beef stew that's how i cook mine i wanted to absorb the flavors of the beef stock and then i've got my peppers here my onions as well so these are going to be used in my beetroot they're going to be used in my chakalaka and they're also going to be used in my beef stew so i'm going to dice this in three different ways and then this Onions are also going to be used in the beetroot, they're going to be used in the chakalaka, and they're also going to be used in the spinach as well. So today we're making a different type of spinach, we're making a garlic creamy spinach, so you'll see how I make that. So let me get into the dicing and you'll see the different shapes um, of the peppers, how I achieve them. So yeah, let me get into it.
okay an update of how everything is going so here is my peppers for chakalaka as you saw it's half of each pepper of the tree of peppers and then i also put a whole onion one whole onion in here and then in this pot is the like you know a quarter of the peppers of each pepper as well as a half onion and then in the other pot right there at the bag um that's where i'm gonna put my spinach in the big pot i also put half of the onion in there so what i'm gonna do um i'm gonna put this onions this one's right here into my uh, this mixture actually the peppers and the onion into my beetroot there's my beetroot in here and i'm also going to mix it with my chutney and yeah i'm still going to have to cut some more onion for my beef stew as well so i'm also going to use a one whole onion so i'm going to do that after i finish cooking my spinach so for now let's do the beetroot and let me show you how i do it okay so day of heat like it's super hot it's super super hot let me stir this for a bit before i move into my beetroot all right cool so this is my beetroot you saw me doing them earlier so i'm gonna put those peppers into the beetroot so what this does it gives the beetroot some sort of taste you know how people would usually sort of put vinegar into the beetroot so this is another way you can do it you can just put in the onions and the pepper into the beetroot so you can have some flavor and then i'm also going to add some chutney into the beetroot as well so as you can see the beetroot is a lot it's probably going to last me for over two weeks but yeah, this is good for me because then I wouldn't have to worry about having like, you know, sides. So this will be my side for my other meals. So you just blend it into here nicely. As you can see, I'm not sure if you can see, but there you go. And then I'm going to put in some chutney as well. So with this, you're just going to have to put, I don't know, just look at it and see if you're happy with like how your beetroot is looking. But as you can see so far, I put like almost half of the bottle, but I think I'm probably going to add some more. So I think this was about six beetroots. Um, so yeah, let me just mix this up and see how it's looking like. But I think I'm already happy with how it's looking like the just gonna add a little bit more, just a little. So yeah, technically half of the bottle, I think. Yeah. So half of the bottle. It's a daily. You're good to go now. You have your beetroot. Let me quickly mix this. So yeah, there you go, guys. There you go. You have your beetroot now, nicely mixed. So just gonna put this in the fridge and let the beetroot absorb the flavors of the peppers and onion as well as the chutney and now i'm gonna focus on my chaka it looks like it's getting ready so i want to quickly do that before it burns as well as my spinach as well i think the onions are ready so i'm just gonna quickly do that so as you already know i don't put water into my spinach so i'm just gonna throw it in the pot with the onions and i'm gonna let it cook So 
oh my peppers are ready so i'm gonna go in with the raja and i'm also gonna put in some parsley as well so um you know the drill you know the drill about three tablespoons of hot raja into the peppers and then about a tablespoon of parsley and pour just a bit into here and then just gonna mix it together and make sure the spices blend with the peppers oopsie daisy that's not good okay smelling so good already like mm, guys yo the smell of the food the beef has been cooking and smelling so good and now the smell of the peppers not just mixed with the spices as well mm, smells so great so i'm just gonna let this saute for like two minutes and then i'm gonna add in my beans okay so now i'm just gonna add in my beans i'm just gonna give it like a little bit i'm just gonna pour in a little bit so it's almost all of it so i'm just gonna mix and see um if i'm happy with the amount of things that i'm here and also if you can realize today there's no um carrots in here today so yeah today we're doing a little bit of a twist so there's different ways to kill a cat i always say but it always tastes good nonetheless so i think i'm happy with the amount of beans that are in here so i'm not gonna add more so i think i added too much beans accidentally it's supposed to be at least half of the can but i think i almost added all of it but it's not a train smash it's still gonna taste so good so today the twist is we're gonna add the sweet chili sauce and then we're also gonna add the chutney as well so that's the twist for today today's chakalaka and then we're also gonna obviously add some salt so let me go in with the salt pour it according to your liking so there you go with the salt and then a bit of chili sauce um i don't know just i think that's enough and then a bit of chutney as well yeah i think that's good so i'm gonna mix that up mm. oh my god <laughs> damn i know capia guys yo i can cook that's what i'm saying wow this is so good like mm, damn this tastes really really good so that's it for the chakalaka guys we are done mm, we are done this slide so i'm gonna switch off the stove no actually i'm not i think i'm just gonna remove this and then cook my pumpkin let me move the spinach over here and then I'll cook my pumpkin on the other side. Okay, I almost forgot the main ingredient in the spinach. So don't forget to add your garlic when you add your onions at the beginning. I forgot to mention this. So make sure you add a spoon of the garlic into your onions when you fry them. And yeah, so you can have that garlic flavor in the spinach. So we're also gonna go ahead and add the fresh cream. I think our spinach is ready. So um, before we finally cook it to the core, let's add some fresh cream and we're gonna let it cook for a while and then also pour in some salt. So let's go in with the fresh cream. We're supposed to shake this thing. So go in with a little bit of cream okay so far i put in half of it 
I'm just gonna mix to check um what's the vibe, what's the feel like. Alrighty, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the bottle in here. So yeah, add one full bottle of cream. This is 250 mils, so 250 mils of cream. So let's mix it up and yeah, leave it for a while. And I'm gonna come back to check on it to see how it looks. So let me close it up and let it cook for a while. No, actually, let me put in some salt first. Forgot about that. Salt for taste. Okay, we're good to go now. Um, let me close it up and allow it to cook. Now our beef is ready and is ready to be mixed with our peppers as well as our spices. So I'm gonna go ahead and put put the mixture of peppers into. A bit skew. and I'm gonna mix this all together. Look at how colorful that is already looking like. Look at how beautiful it is already. So I'm also gonna go ahead and add some of the hot raja as well in here. So I'm going to go ahead and add two of the spices. I'm going to add the hot raja as well as the flavorful and mouth. So I don't like over spicing my beef because I like to retain the taste of the beef. So this is the only thing that I'm going to add. So you can go in. I'd say about um, two tablespoons of hot raja then about a tablespoon of flavorful and mild cherry powder raja of course and then we're going to mix this up together look at how beautiful it's looking So I'm going to close this up and let it cook for a while and then um, I'm going to check on my spinach which I think is ready. I switch the stove off and it's looking good. With regards to the pumpkin, um, I did it the way I did it the last time. Nothing too hectic, just some butter and then as well as some sugar well margarine and then as well as some sugar and i let it boil and then um, mesh it afterwards so if you want to see that you can watch the previous video so yeah the spinach is ready so i'm just gonna add some sugar into my pumpkin it also looks ready So I'm gonna go in with this, um, the tasty hearty beef. So I'm not gonna put in a lot. I'm just gonna put in a little, just to give it some thickness, obviously, but we also don't wanna steal away from the beef. Sometimes the beef doesn't taste as good because we steal away from the flavor by putting in too much, you know, like soup inside, you know, this instant soup. So you just put in a little 
just to give it some thickness and some flavor, but you don't put in a lot. So that's enough. I'd say it's about a tablespoon, probably and a half. Okay. <laughs> But just a little enough to give it some thickness and then I'm also going to go in with some salt. A biggie of salt for flavor. And basically that's it guys, you don't add a lot of things so you retain the taste of your beef. So I need to add some water now since I added the soup. So I need a cup. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water into the beef as well, just to give it some soup. I think that's enough, but I'll just check it. If I need more water, I'll put in some. But so far I'm happy with the amount of water that's in here. It looks good. Um, I'm gonna let it cook for a while, like probably for a good five minutes and come check on it. But that will be it. And I'm also gonna taste the flavor afterwards in five minutes time to check if I'm also loving um, the salt, if the salt is enough. So let me let it cook now for a good Five minutes then I will check on it again yeah this is how it's looking it's looking good I'm loving how it's looking can't wait to dig in I can't wait to dig in just the peppers, nothing else, no potato, no nothing. Just peppers and onion and yeah, some hearty beef. And yeah, this is it for the beef stew, guys. I'm gonna switch off the stove. I think also you can see my peppers have been cooking along with the beef and they're looking soft. So I'm just gonna switch my stove off and... Okay, yeah. so there you go, guys. So this is the final product. This is what we have and look at how good that looks i can't wait to dig in and i can tell you now it tastes so good i was busy nibbling on the dumpling and yay <laughs> tasted so good so i reserved myself for this final meal and i'm liking it Thank you for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe i really really hope you enjoy the meal and i hope you really do try it out please drop your comments below if you've tried it out and tell me how it goes anyway i'll see you on my next one stay blessed and stay safe until next time ciao